This is the Pioneer TX720. It's a synthesized stereo tuner. It does turn on, but it doesn't seem to respond when I try to change the frequency. And none of the other controls seems to affect it either. Aside from the AM FM switch. Okay, let's have a look inside. Let's remove the front too. So I want to show you a very nice feature in the schematic that you unfortunately don't see very often. And that is these small letters on the signal traces. And they are there to help you follow the signal trace. As you can see in this cutout of a schematic, it's quite a rat's nest with signals going everywhere. Now let's say we want to see where this switch goes. We follow it up here in a straight line, quite easy. And here we have these letters N and M. And then these same letters repeat every now and then on this signal trace and we can easily see that it's connected to the voltage synthesizer. It's a really easy way to make the schematic a lot easier to read. I wish it was more common. Here we have the voltage synthesizer. I suppose that's the circuit that decides which frequency to listen to. Let's do some measurements. We start with the supply voltage. It's supposed to be 8.4, 8.3, that's good. Okay, let's make sure it gets its input from the up and down frequency selector switches. We have 8.3 volts now, and then we we'll close it to ground. Yep. So let's take a look at the display control circuit. Okay, let's start by measuring the positive supply voltage. It's at zero volts. So there doesn't seem to be a proper supply voltage. So let's see where the supply voltage comes from. There's supposed to be a supply voltage coming from this line, but there doesn't seem to be anything on it. The supply voltage for the control board is supposed to come from this transistor, so let's measure that. It's supposed to be 13 volts, 7.7 .7 and 8.3. Minus 0.5 volts. 0 volts. And 0 volts. So there's obviously some voltage that is not present. So the voltage that goes through this transistor is supposed to come from the power supply. So it seems like there's some voltage missing from the power supply output. Let's measure directly on the output of the power supply to make sure that it's actually not there. Here we have ground. And to the right of it we should have 13.4 volts. But there we have nothing. Okay, so there's something wrong with the power supply, it seems. So the 13.4 volts is supposed to come from this power transistor. So let's measure on all the pins. The first one is supposed to be 14 volts. That's correct. Second one is supposed to be 20 volts. Close enough. And the third one is supposed to be 13.4 volts. But there's nothing there. So it could be something wrong with the transistor or some adjacent component. So as I was poking around with the transistor, it actually came to life. So I assume there's some bad connection close to the transistor. Maybe a cracked solder joint. Let's poke around a bit. You might have seen it flickering a bit. So let's have a look on the bottom side of that PCB. Nothing super obvious, but let's do some reflowing of the solder joints. Okay, let's make sure we have 13.4 volts now. There we go. Let's make sure it's not flickering anymore.
seems to be very stable now. Okay, I guess it's time to test it. Okay, let's see if we can change the frequency. We can. Oh, we got some signal. <laughs> okay, before we assembling it, let's make sure there's sound on the output. Yep, it's definitely working. So I think we got a bit lucky here. Not that it came to life without changing any components, but that we managed to pinpoint the problem to the power supply before it came to life. It has probably been moved around quite a bit since it last was operated and has probably received a few hits on the way. So a cracked solder joint is not that hard to imagine. Now let's say it had sprung to life just when we started troubleshooting. The misconnection could be almost anywhere in the unit and it would be really hard to find. And the problems would most certainly come back at a later time. But this time we managed to pinpoint the problem to the power supply and it was quite quick to just reflow all the solder joint in the power supply. So now it seems we have a stable operation of this Pioneer TX720.